I read a book this summer, fascinating book. Once I started it, I couldn't put it down. The title of it is The Great Influenza. I don't normally read a book on the flu. I've never read a book on the flu in my life. And when I started to read the book, I was afraid I was going to get caught up in graphs and charts and clinical jargon that I couldn't even comprehend. But it is a brilliant book, a bestseller on the New York Times bestseller list, written by John Barry, who is extremely gifted as a researcher and a writer. It is magisterial, it is monumental in what it accomplishes as a book, as a as an act of research and presentation, it's, uh, it's one of the top that I've ever read in my entire life. It's the story of the flu. The flu like you've never known the flu, but like some of your parents knew the flu. Go back to the year 1918, the year of the Great War, the First World War. There are some pigs in western Kansas. Uh, these pigs have somehow contracted a virus from birds. All flu viruses originate with birds. These pigs managed to pass this virus on to some young men. Those young men are conscripted into the army because America is amassing troops to fight in World War I. They're sent to a camp in the eastern part of Kansas. They go to the camp. There's as many as 40,000 men jammed in there, and the flu that they have infects the men that are there. Now remember, this is 1918. There's never been an actual cure of a disease in the history of the world until 1885. You understand that? They didn't even understand the pathology of disease. And nobody ever cured anybody of anything. So the medical art is deadly, not life-giving. They don't know what to do. They don't understand quarantine. They don't understand isolation. They don't even understand the virus. They don't even know what a virus is and what it does. They don't know that a virus is not a living creature like a bacteria. It's a half living thing that attaches itself to the DNA of a living cell, encodes that living cell with its own DNA, and then it spreads through the cell system. There are so many different kinds of viruses. This just happened to be the most virulent one in human history. And before it was done running its course in 24 months, are you ready for this? A hundred million people were dead. One hundred million around the world. Some of your parents lived through that. That's why you're here. Horrendous. Medical people didn't know what to do with, about it. It's probably the greatest moment in American medical history because in the horror of those hours and those days and those months, all the great medical institutions of our country were founded. The greatest research in medical history in America was done as they tried to solve the problem. They never solved it. 30 years later, they couldn't solve it. They never believed it was a virus. They thought it was a bacteria. Bacteria, the, the virus managed to mutate up to that level of virulence. And since that time, it has mutated downward to a much less virulent form, which we usually experience during the flu season. There's no reason to explain why it became so virulent then and why it's less now, but it could happen again. Point being, all things don't continue the same way. That little half creature that exists in a fallen world killed a hundred million people. How fragile is life? It's simply a tool. Atheism is simply a tool. Agnosticism is simply a tool to free up the sinner to indulge his lust. Those are the arguments. Ridicule, immorality, uniformity. Everything continues the same way. That's revisionistic history. We know better. By the way, the great influenza of that 24-month period killed 10 times the number of who died in Europe in the blue, in the black death, the bubonic plague. As far as we know, the greatest, it was the greatest killer in human history.